What up, y'all? Boy Flacco here at the Go Power Sports headquarters. Today, we're going to talk about a mechanical disc brake kit. Let's get it. All right, so included in your kit will be your brake caliper bracket, your brake caliper itself, which is mechanical, and you get the option of a six, which this is a six inch or an eight inch mechanical brake disc. The tools used on this job will be a good old impact with a 14 millimeter socket, an 11 millimeter wrench, 5 8 wrench, 17 millimeter wrench, and a couple of punches. Oh, and your hammer. So this kit is primarily ideal for you like your old school yard cart builds. It's actually what we use on our vintage cart kits if you ever um, heard about those. But if you don't want to make a lot of changes and keep things original, you know, for your vintage kits or vintage go-karts, your yard carts, stuff like that, then it's the kit for you. Typically on this application, what you'll do is this will be welded, may already be welded depending on what type of cart you have but this is the ideal bracket for this caliper. So it'll be welded in position that your caliper can slide into place and be center line with your brake disc. I know in some applications you may have to have your arm flip and we're gonna get into explaining how to do that and also adjusting the drag on your brake. So let's get it. So I'm gonna start by opening up my caliper. A 14 millimeter socket and a 17 millimeter wrench. Depending, like I said, depending on the application, you may need to have this arm up. Some applications you may need to have this arm down, but you're not able to just simply flip the bracket. So, what you do is flip the arm. Let's go ahead and open up your caliper. Remove your puck style brake pad. And the brake pad barrier. And the brake pad pin. Once those are removed, you'll see a pin, a silver pin that goes through and holds the caliper. Remove our locking nut here so that our pin is clear. Go to the other side. We're gonna take our punches and knock that pin out. It should slide right out for you. you. Go ahead and remove your pin completely. All right, so once you get your pin removed and your uh, lever arm freed up, what we're gonna be doing is literally flipping it to the top. When doing that, you wanna make sure that you keep your directional arrow facing the flat side of your caliper. So it's gonna go to the top, Remember the arrow needs to be facing forward, just like so. Reason being that once you engage your brake, you'll be pulling on the lever. So the arrow is showing you the direction it should be pulled on. So now what we're gonna do is go ahead and, now that we got a flip, we'll go ahead and get our pins installed. Once you get your pin started into the hole, the first hole on your caliper, you can go ahead and line it up with your lever. Slide it all the way through. Go ahead and finish tapping it all the way flush. Once you got your pin tapped in, you want to double check the other side. Make sure it's nice and snug. Go ahead and give it a push. Make sure it's not coming out. You're good to go. So we're going to go ahead and start putting our brake caliper back together. I'm going to start with the jam nut. Go ahead and insert it. Just finger tight. So my jam nuts installed. Go ahead and install your brake pin and it'll go with the round part in the caliper. Remember, the flat side of your pin should be facing your brake pad. But before you insert your brake pad, barrier, plug style brake pad. Put the caliper back together. Make sure that your puck still stand in the sunk hole for it. Install your uh, 14 millimeter bolts, nut set. So now that we got our caliper back together, I'm gonna show you guys how to set the drag on your brake for your desired stop to power. So I'm gonna start by sliding my brake disc in. And you'll see I'm not able to get my brake disc all the way in, so that tells me right off the bat that I got too much drag. 
I'm gonna decrease my drag by backing out my lock nut. Now I can go ahead and insert my brake disc. I'm gonna increase the drag, set my drag. You definitely want full contact of your brake pad on the brake disc, meaning you don't want your brake disc barely over your brake pad. You want a full contact, but you don't want to be bottomed out with the top of your brake caliper as well. If you're using our brake disc bracket, keep that in mind when welding this bad boy on, that you're gonna to wanna to have that brake set in the proper position. And once that brake's on, and your brake disc in between your pads, you wanna check your drag by, you, you should have just barely a little drag. It shouldn't, it should barely let you move. Once you get that desired drag, what you do is back off of it a little bit. And I'm just doing it by hand now. To where you can feel the stop, but you're able to move. And you can kind of hear it. That's what you're looking for. Once you find this a desired drag, which you may want yours a little tighter, some people may want theirs a little looser. So once you find that desired drag, you move your lock nut down, which is a 17 millimeter. You'll hold the top nut, which is an 11 millimeter in place, and go ahead and torque down on the lock nut. And that's gonna maintain the desired drag. That way, once your brake is engaged, you're not able to move. So now that we kind of got this explained on flipping your lever over, setting your brake drag for your desired brake pressure, we're gonna take y'all up front and let y'all see what this thing looks like actually installed and welded onto one of our go-karts. So let's go check it out. All right, so you'll see here that on our vintage cart, that the brake has been welded into the desired place so that it's in line brake this and it's already been set so it has the desired drag which you see it says free it's going to have a free spin which we can't spin it now because we have it on our stand but that pretty much sums it up you may even want to throw another bracket in it's something we just kind of did to give it a little bit more stability Give it a little bit more rigidity, but that's pretty much it. You see here, this one comes uh, with the standard left side mount, meaning that your arm is still going to be upward. But in the case of you mounting it on the opposite side, that's where it would come into play where you will be needing to flip your arm over. So as you can see, this one be able, this one would be able to be mounted on the right side because the arm is opposite direction. But if you look close at the two, you can see the difference. And that's pretty much what we mean by flipping your bracket. And you'll need to do this, like I say, once you're wanting to put your bracket on the opposite side. So that pretty much sums it up. If you're trying to keep it old school, trying to keep it OG, just original or simple, y'all check us out. Come grab one of our mechanical brake kits. And uh, make sure you like, subscribe, and follow us. Y'all keep it real.